Hey there, one of Indy here coming with good news from our overlords. They have released the newest version of Game Maker, which is the V5. If you're just thinking like, wait a minute, what about the V4? Well, they kind of skipped it as it seems. So we are uh, heading into the millennium with the V5 here. Just one thing before we start the video. I heard from one of my subscribers. Oh, subscribers i guess subscribers one of the guys in discord said like hey um the newest update corrupted his files cannot confirm that just take it with a grain of salt maybe you will have some issues for that so just take the precautionary tale and just make a copy of your project file in case for example it would destroy it so once again uh, i cannot confirm it but once again new updates have sometimes for some people and me included some nasty outcomes so therefore just be aware of that so let's go with the first part which is what we're seeing in front of you the bling bling part which is the newest um, effect and it's now not a filter it's now called an effect so what is that well glad you asked and if not i'm gonna tell you <laughs> Anyway, so we got here our wind effect. Here we go. And then normally you have uh, your FX layer and then you can select all of your these guys, but they are all based on a shader. So for example, if I go here and you got an instant preview that doesn't work for this newest one, which is called wind blow particles. But basically this is a weather creating machine, which is pretty sweet. So a weather particle creating machine and then um, just says in game only and then for example once we run that you will see lots of flying green bananas uh, on the screen it's supposed to be leaves for me it's bananas it doesn't really matter <laughs> and they are quite huge as it seems so once again uh, pretty cool stuff and as you can see they have kind of different kind of physics and they uh, well, are flying to, through the whole thing like crazy so for that you can uh, create your own uh, take your own particle if you like and then you got tons of things where you can customize it you got even a debug version the debug where are you blower physics enable debug mode and then it you will it will even show you where the wind direction is so this is pretty sweet and then for example i used uh, i abused the system instantly for creating rain so this is what you're seeing right now. Come on, come on, come on. Because there are two things which the system is doing. First of all, spawning the particle. And second of all, uh, spawning a trail, which you're seeing on the screen. So this is actually the trail only being displayed. So you can disable the particle itself and just create that. Or you can go with uh, my, what I did here with my snow bubble here. That's basically it. And then, and then, uh, we can create snow effects. This is of course making my own weather system, which I sell on itch.io, <laughs> pretty much redundant. Doesn't really matter. Uh, that system is pretty good and a plus plus for the community. Alrighty, so let's go into some other news, uh, more technical stuff. So here once again, this is the official blog post on that. Mr. Mataru already did this one. So here, great thanks that you did this and then uh, let's see what's actually happening so the first thing which he already did a video which he did a video on that i can skip this content for now is time sources basically just imagine you have the regular alarm event and then you got the giga chat version of that so basically it's like coming like yo bro and then <laughs> it's basically doing the same as an alarm but you can customize it further you have more control more input so tons of things which you can do or you can use the small uh, uh, skimpy small version which is just the alarm which is doing its job also or you go for giga chat time sources bro and then you can do a lot of things more of course this is then depending on your level of expertise I'm gonna just completely skip on that because he did a pretty good job in his video also then we got a net 6 upgrade that was actually more of a concern for our uh, linux or mac os bros or bro ads um, there were some issues with that because of Mono. If you don't know what Mono is, it's basically a platform for independent frameworks or C, C and C Sharp programming. It doesn't really matter. Now it's supposed to be fixed and now everything is running better and the IDE should be faster and lower memory usage. Yay. 
Alrighty then, let's go into the next part, which could be interesting. This is concerning structs. If you haven't seen struct or if you don't know what that is, link in the description below. And basically before that we had some issues. So for example, you had a create event, then you wanted to change something. But uh, if you change something, then uh, the applying was uh, one step later. But for example, you want maybe to do something instantly. That wasn't possible. Now it is. So what, I, what do I mean by that? To give a pretty easy example. So let's say we have the regular thing. So instance create layer or instance create depth. Both work, by the way. And then uh, here you see, huh, what is this? New entry point, which says var struct. So if you leave this open, nothing has actually changed. But you can actually insert a struct in here and then change stuff on the fly, so instantly. So how did we do that before? Well, before we just said like, hey, well, uh, we just said, uh, yeah, my bad. Come on, let's make this look neater. We before had something like this and then say like image X scale was, I don't know, 50 or whatever. And then that code was being uh, done one step later. So basically you run your create event, then I guess step event and all the other stuff. And then one step later, you will actually update your image X scale and set it to 50. It was not instantly. But for example, if you want to do stuff instantly, let's copy, copy, uh, paste that. We can actually insert our structs. So once again, link in the description below if you know how structs are, because they have kind of a different syntax and now it doesn't look too good this is how it's being so basically you got your brackets and then for example you can create your own variables or um, use the internal ones and then double points and then comma and then for example the value you want to input let's go for 50 or whatever and boom uh, all the stuff is internally instantly uh, changed and applied which is pretty sweet so this is a neat addition to that of course you can create your own variables or Bobster, here we go. And then this variable is saying like, hey, variable Bobster only reference one. But of course, you create before the actual create event uh, is applied, you uh, save this variable in there. And of course, you can use it. So once again, you can instantly set up stuff and input it. Very, very useful for instant creation where you want to have some variation. And of course, you can actually input in here other things which are mentioned in this article, so constructors and objects. And then let's go to the next part, which is find our references. That is kind of important, uh, but of course for now only for the better. So here, this is not part of the runtime, but let's say you have an error and then it just tells you like, hey, at this step, uh, this uh, point, and for example, you created this, and then you have a step event, and then you have this event, and then you got kind of an order of things which are happening, and then at some point it would break and create the error. Now you can actually uh, check out, hey, where is stuff actually coming from? And then you can recreate this order, so the reference order, to find all the references which are neatly shown in this uh, search result box then here later on then you can just select sweet where's the stuff coming from and then you can control that before that's pretty neat function to be honest and then we got the sound inspector well you can see now the waveform in the inspector should i show it yes of course i show it because why not mm, so let's say you have a sound file Yay, this is the same. And then for example, you just open your Mr. Inspector and then you see the waveform. Wow, amazing. As you can hear from my voice, that was the thing which I always wanted to have. Of course, more functionality is always good and that it's showing it's of course good too, but <laughs> it's nothing which I would be saying like, wow, see, maybe I'm not seeing it correctly because I'm not a sound bro in this kind of regard. I am more the programmer. So maybe this has some impact. Not sure to be honest uh, here. For example, what I would like to have is kind of an option where if you, for example, update your group in which the sound file is. So one thing, for example, which, which I would like to see is and maybe one of the yo-yo guys, programmers, are actually seeing that. Not sure, I guess not, I'm too small for that. But an um, option where you can, for example, set the volume 
and for example if you change the total volume of your audio group then this would be a relevant uh, thing also for example you can check or uncheck that and then um, if you for example change the audio group volume then it would change that um, in well with the relevant value in here for now for example if you have for example set it to here and then you have an audio group you're pretty much overwriting this value which isn't too good eh. but i guess this is the way it goes Alrighty, and do we have something else audio inspector the wind blowing leaves effect this is the bling bling which i showed at the very beginning i will make some videos on that Alrighty, so once again hopefully yet was of interest to you and now you see uh, that we got a new update once again take it with a grain of salt this may be uh, doing um, something to your project file or corrupting it or deleting some files or some uh, what was it some lines he said like yeah it was deleting some lines from his game just take it with a grain of salt i don't know what's happening there just one dude for now just be careful with that and therefore best practice is then before each update and this is what i do always because that is pretty much a headache create a backup file start it load it check out if um, everything is all right because once you save it then it runs on the newest version and then you cannot go back so if you just have one file you better have backup files Alrighty, that was it from my side have a good one one up indie